MSC WhatsApp group. Uh, sir, I send it the message, sir. Okay. Sir, YouTube is working, sir. Okay. Kunasegaran, how many people are there in YouTube? Technical team, am I audible? Yes, sir. How many roughly in uh, YouTube?
సార్ సెవెంటీ టూ సార్ ఓకే గుడ్ నివేదిత గెట్ రెడీ ఓకే సార్ సార్ స్టార్ట్ పండిలామా సార్ చీప్ కేస్ సార్ ఎస్ ఎస్ వి కెన్ ఓకే నివేదిత స్టార్ట్ నౌ ఓకే సార్ అ వెరీ డిలైట్ఫుల్ అండ్ ఎన్లైటెనింగ్ ఈవినింగ్ టు एवरीवन on behalf of the management of bs abdul rahman present institute of science and technology dr s kutti rani dean of physical and chemical sciences dr d ishwara murthy head of the department of chemistry dr n vasi male assistant professor and coordinator and faculty members i heartily welcome you all to the third day of the summer internship on recent advances in chemical sciences The great scientist Marie Curie once said I'm among those who think that science has great beauty a scientist in his laboratory is not only a technician he is also a child placed before natural phenomena which impress him like a fairy tale as like that our eminent speaker for today professor dr p l malay is also a person who is impressed by science i'm very happy to welcome our today's speaker professor dr p l malay Professor Dr P L Malai received his PhD from Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. He had his postdoctoral research at Kaisho University Japan for more than 6 years. He was a recipient of a prestigious Japan Society for the Promotion of Science fellowship. He has won special recognition award for Eng Ceramics by Ceramic Society of Japan for his contribution to ceramics applications. Presently he is a professor and head at department of green energy technology madanjit school of green energy technologies pondicherry university he has published more than 80 research papers in reputed international journals in the field including two books and chapters and holds six patents currently his h index is 26 his research work concentrates on batteries supercapacitors supercapacitry fuel cells and automobile emission sensors very recently he has successfully fabricated practically large pouch type sodium ion ultra capacitor with high specific energy of 150 watt per kilogram inverse that was demonstrator for powering consumer led bulb and the work was accepted for publication in acs energy and fuels he has developed metal complexes as versatile precursor for development of electrode materials for supercapacitry the supercapacitry device exhibited high energy of 37 watt per kilogram inverse at a specific power 560 watt kilogram inverse and high specific power of 2750 watt kilogram inverse the specific energy was still 18 watt kilogram inverse such a fine work has been recently published in rsc's new journal of chemistry with cover featured this work has been also recently covered several national news media such as the hindu and the new indian express he has also another cover featured article that has been published in chem electro chem on metal air battery his group at pondicherry university concentrates on material generation to laboratory prototype devices with trl level at least 4 and above recently he has been in various national committees such as member of dast iiss energy storage consortium acted as indian panel member of vaibahu summit 2020 which was inaugurated by a prime minister it is a great pleasure for me to welcome professor dr p l malay on behalf of everyone a very warm welcome sir i now hand over the session to professor dr p l malay thank you very much uh, nivedita for your kind and uh, at the outset i would like to thank the organizers especially my friend dr vasi malay and his team members the head of the department and the dean and all the responsible people for inviting me as one of the resource person to be uh, for this one month summer internship through online 
I think without uh, elaborating anything on that, let me go into the topic that was uh, given to you. Let me share the screen. Am I audible? Is my screen visible? Can I go ahead? Yes, sir. Okay. It's visible. You are audible. You can go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so before I begin, uh, let me appreciate the organizers. Even in this uh, pandemic uh, days, or maybe in a year, uh, they have taken a pain to organize such a wonderful series of lectures for benefit in the PG student. I remember 20 years before I was like among you, so looking for such uh, facilities or contented, we are fortunate that we could get, maybe sometimes we could not get, but so I, I must appreciate the organizers of this program that it will definitely benefit many of you. And I went through the list of the resource persons uh, that was selected. They are very high profile and I had they, they have all had uh, ha, uh, hands on experience in many of the equipment that we are going to learn. So one of such equipment is powder X-ray diffraction. I have extensively used with this, this facility for my research. I continue to use, and my student continue to use this facility, uh, both uh, in my own in my own hands. I have recorded maybe by now maybe thousands of samples. I would have recorded by now past 20 years also. And uh, let's see what are the basics and their applications of this powder X-ray diffraction. So, as introduced uh, by Nivedita, so our group concentrates on four important areas. So, I usually give this slide for the benefit of the PG student or MPhil student if they are attending. Those who are interest, interested in my research group, they can pick up some of the research articles or why not? If they are interested, they are most welcome to join in our group as a research, research fellow, maybe a PhD student or postdoctoral or project assistant, whatever suitable to you. So we work on four important areas. Uh, the, the primary work that we concentrate on electrode materials for batteries. We exclusively concentrate on uh, electrode materials for lithium ion battery, lithium air battery, lithium sulfur and sodium air batteries. And uh, there is a assisted device to the batteries as you all know, supercapacitors and a supercapacitry. Our group makes metals, metal oxides, hydroxides, and composites to fabricate into symmetric as well as asymmetric type uh, supercapacitors. So very recently, we are into supercapacitry, which has the features of battery as well as the supercapacitor. Our group also engages on the fuel cell research activities. We make catalyst, bifunctional, monocatalyst, trimetallic, tri tri and apply them as a fuel cell catalyst, both in acid and alkaline environment. I have got a very good expertise on sensors where we make uh, materials for the sensing of toxic emissions that are emitted from the automobiles, industrial furnaces, exclusively NO, NO2, and the ammonia sensors. I'm, I'm happy to tell that uh, Mitsubishi Corporation has taken up one of our research work exclusively on ammonia sensor for implementing in their uh, industrial activities, ammonia sensor, high temperature ammonia sensors. So these are all about my research background. Those who are interested to do any, either your MSc project or MPhil project, or if you want to become a PhD student or postdoc, young researcher, if you are a postdoc, you are most welcome to our lab. And if you are a PhD student, only you have to take up either our entrance examination or qualify JRF, then you can get admitted to the department and why not in our department? I'm not advertising for if, if anybody is interested, I'm sure this will be helpful. Okay, by now, I'm sure all of you are aware of that. Uh, I, our group works on materials. When I say materials, we mean, I mean, it is solid materials. And uh, so this uh, series of lectures, summer, in, summer intention, I understand that it is planned for 
various characterization tools or various analytical equipments which are meant for characterization of the materials not necessarily solid materials that includes maybe sometimes gaseous materials or substances or liquid materials as well but this characterization tool x ray diffraction spectro x ray diffraction not spectroscopy x ray diffraction is mainly meant for solid materials when i say solid materials we have different forms thin films powder grain monolithic etc so before we come to that we go to that any solid material it can be correct they can be characterized by three means they can be characterized by the structural structural characterization they can also be characterized by spectroscopic characterization and morphological characterization what do you understand by structural characterization when i say structure or structural characterization any chemist or material scientist or chemist or physicist they it should come to you three structures molecular structure atomic structure and electronic structure now i will add one more crystal structure atomic structure molecular structure you know electronic structure which deals with the boundaries band bending band formation all you know or you may be studying or if you have not studied you will be studying then this is crystal structure using powder x ray diffraction or x ray diffraction one can characterize the solid materials in terms of their crystallinity and crystallographic locations or crystallographic characterization so in all in all what we want to know we want to know what is the structure when i say sodium chloride sodium atom you know you can give atomic structure or atom electronic configuration there are no sodium molecule unlike chlorine molecule but when i say crystal structure of sodium chloride how it looks you might be wondering that you can get from x ray diffraction of course you need to go for a single crystal powder x ray diffraction also will substantiate to the maximum extent what is spectroscopic characterization we have at least more than 10 15 spectroscopies on the communities available u visible is the most basic one infrared spectroscopy raman spectroscopy nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy electron spin resonance spectroscopy mass spectrometry photo electron spectroscopy nuclear magnetic resonance nqr nuclear quadrupole uh, spectroscopy at least 10 15 spectroscopies are available using which it is possible to arrive sometimes atomic structure molecular structure very specifically so u visible spectroscopy will give you band gap infrared spectroscopy will give you what are the adsorbed species or functional groups in a molecule maybe why not in the solid also raman spectroscopy can supplement the infrared spectroscopy and in nmr esr and mass spectrometry all those thing can be used to mainly characterize liquid materials of course solid can also be used what are morphological characterization we know structure atomic atomic structure molecular structure electronic structure now i am telling you crystallographic structure wait for the details of crystallographic structures what are this morphological characterization how the material surface looks i have a surface here for example this is a cube or i have some object very smooth but whereas the back cover of mobile phone is not a very smooth how the surface looks when you synthesize or when you fabricate any material how the surface looks that is the canopy of your material surface nature we call it techn technically morphological character whether it is having a spher spherical morphology non spherical morphology rod wire rectangular triangular 
whether all the particles are same, etc., you can obtain from the microscopic characterization under morphological characterization. We have countable number of microscopes. The most extensively used microscopic technique is electron microscope. You can have scanning electron micro microscope and a transmit electron microscope. Then advanced techniques are STM and EFM, scanning, tunneling microscope, atomic force microscope, etc. So my lecture for about one hour or so will be restricted to X-ray diffraction, though you have several characterization. Combining all these characterization, one can know what material you have fabricated. What are its nature? What are its surface nature? That's all you will know. There are many other properties you need to characterize when given your material. Okay. I hope in last next one, one month that this, this program has been planned. I hope at the end of this uh, session, one month session, I'm sure be equipped with all most of these terminologies or equipments. So when I say solid materials, it's a matter. As we all know that matter exists in three phases predominantly. And of course, one can claim there is a plasma. Okay, so neither solid, liquid, gas, etc. But predominantly, matter can be in gaseous state, liquid state, solid state. So we have we know that uh, all these matter or phases they have their own characteristic or features. I would say, what are those features? So when we have a collection of gaseous molecule, for example, hydrogen, homodiatomic molecule, hydrogen. Okay or carbon monoxide, heterodiatomic molecule. These two are linear molecule. Whereas water can exist in gaseous state, right? Vapor, heterotriatomic, non-linear molecule. So consider gaseous molecules kept it in a vessel. They do not bond to each other in the gaseous state, as we all know. They don't have long range order because of pressure temperature volume and they can they are free to move all along they are free to move along and they are not restricted to one place or one moment or technically they have all the three de three degrees of freedom what are the degrees of freedom translational degrees of freedom what is translational degrees of freedom movement of the molecule it can move from one place to another places in three all the three Cartesian coordinates. And, or, and it can also be having rotational degrees of freedom. Molecule can rotate, you know, whether it is a linear molecule, non-linear molecule, it can rotate. And it can also vibrate, stretch. It can stretch. Any molecule will have three and degrees of freedom, where n denotes the number of atoms. So, for example, carbon monoxide will have six degrees of freedom. That includes translational, rotational, vibrational. How many translational, how many rotational, how many vibrational? You will know using these two equations. You can classify linear molecule and non-linear molecule. How many degrees of freedom? 3n. Any non-linear molecule will have 3n minus 6 vibrational. The remaining three are translational plus three rotational. Any linear molecule will have 3 and minus 5 degrees of vibrational freedom. The remaining 3 are translational and 2 are rotational. There is a 1 reduction in the rotational degrees of freedom for a linear molecule when we move from non-linear. I am sure you know why. So when you are studying about spectroscopy, this question is, these contents are taught. So in gaseous molecule, I, I will not go into the details of all these things. In gaseous molecule, the very feature is they don't bound to each other and they are very to, free to move all along. They have, have very large freedom. They can move all along the container. And these are the translational, rotational degrees of freedom and the vibrational degrees of freedom. Okay, so molecules are apart. They are not bound to each other. How will you make the molecules to bound, bound together or bind together? Make it in the, in the in the from gaseous state to liquid state. You need to bring them together. By doing so, so by doing so in the liquid state, so the molecules will have opportunity to have a better interaction. 
here it can it can move all along, all along, all along the container but there is a reduction in the translational degrees of freedom it can rotate it can vibrate but it cannot translate it cannot move because they are bound to the some extent they are bound in the liquid state so that's why from the gaseous state to liquid state the the molecules becoming liquid state okay but they are influenced by the thermal energy they are influenced influenced by the thermal energy so but still if you make more further to interact this is the uh, translational degrees of freedom restricted in the case of liquid but in the case of solids all the three degrees of freedoms are restricted and the molecules their atomic position or their atomic ionic positions are fixed and there is a strong bond present between the molecules there is a strong bond present between the molecules or atoms or ions and in order to break you require more energy you see that if it is a water molecule it is frozen in the ice the translational degrees of freedom rotational degrees of freedom vibrational degrees of freedom all are arrested it, to the maximum extent it can only vibrate in, in its position but definitely translational and the rotational degrees of freedom are restricted those are the characteristic of solids and uh, it so happened that the solid material can exist in these three forms powder form thin film sometimes flexible thin film tube rod wire etc the same solid can be made into all these three forms or a material one material one solid material for example what material titanium i can take i can make in the form of powder titanium in the form of a film film it need not be a flexible film but i can make a thin film titanium tube titanium rod titanium wire for example you can make so any solid material it can be present in any of these forms powder thin film tube wire rod etc when i say solid material it can be present either in crystalline phase or crystalline nature and or non crystalline or amorphous nature and when i say crystalline nature either it can be present in a single crystalline or multi crystalline or poly crystalline what all crystalline samples or crystalline materials the ions atoms or molecules are having very long range order in crystalline materials for example i have given here part of silicon oxide we have a silicon oxygen silicon oxygen silicon oxygen we have a silicon oxygen silicon oxygen it is repeating it is repeating in all the three dimensions or directions or the take home point is all crystalline samples will have long range order whether you move in x axis or x cartesian coordinate y cartesian coordinate z cartesian coordinate in all the three dimensions or directions the arrangement of atoms ions or molecules will be same or they have long range order examples metals ceramics that means oxide self sulfides carbides etc sometimes polymers also polymers they are purely crystalline but definitely metals and the ceramics depending on the method of preparation they can become crystalline materials what are non crystalline or amorphous material they don't have long range order it's as simple as that you see here this also silicon dioxide they also made up of silicon and oxygen but you see here here silicon oxygen the number of silicon and oxygen or the ring is different here and different here and very different here and no ring here it means amorphous materials lack the long range order whereas crystalline material they maintain the long range order long range symmetry is the characteristic of crystalline materials whether single crystalline or multi crystalline that is later non crystalline materials or amorphous materials they have only short range order only within this local symmetry only maintained 
not the material symmetry that's the characteristic quite often glasses ceramic glasses materials they have a glassy property they are mostly amorphous and this material can be prepared by means of rapid cooling or konchi instead of slow cooling generally slow cooling cooling of any processing will lead to crystalline material many a times crystalline material but rapid cooling otherwise known as quenching process what is quenching process you are preparing some material for example silicon maybe you are recrystallizing maybe at 1000 degree or 2000 degree from 1000 degree immediately you if you bring down to room temperature that the process is known as quenching how will you do you dump it in the water or maybe with liquid nitrogen or so carefully that is rapid cooling or quenching immediately quench when you are thirst when you take water you are quenching with thirst it's like that from high temperature bring it to room temperature is a process known as quenching quenching always leads to amorphous nature whereas slow cooling so from 1000 degree to room temperature if you if you cool for 24 hours or more than 24 hours or days definitely you are going to create crystalline materials so it means that whether the material is going to be a crystalline or amorphous or non crystalline nature or single crystalline nature it depends on the process of the process of the synthetic method that you adopt the same material can be prepared either in crystalline material amorphous material single crystalline material especially metals metal oxides sulfides phosphides etc what are single crystalline so as you see here they maintain well ordered arrangements of atoms ions or molecules and single crystals the whole crystal will have only one phase you have you are already you have already crossed the bsc definitely you would have studied bracks bracks angle or bracks plane miller indices etc okay the whole crystal will have only one bracket plane if you take a x ray diffraction of single crystal you will get only one peak if it is made up of one 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 plane whether it is a gold silver or platinum or anything you will get one single peak that is single crystal the, the arrangement of atoms ions are highly ordered and they maintain only one 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 phase that is a single crystal and they have a repeated arrangement of atoms ions or molecules for any length of the crystal for that matter if the crystal is 1 meter 1 meter of single crystal if you take x ray diffraction you will get only one peak if it is 111 peak 111 plane you will get 111 peak if it is a silicon you will get silicon 111 peak or gold silver or any other material whereas polycrystalline or multi crystalline materials they have a long range order but they contain multi phases or multi single crystals that's why the name called polycrystalline they are crystalline materials but they are not having a single crystal but they have connection of single crystals and each each domain is known as crystallite each domain is known as crystallite so it may be a silicon or tin platinum gold nickel oxide titanium oxide or anything etc okay so it so happen that nano materials and nano crystalline materials having 1 to 100 nanometer are known as nano crystalline materials that's not the focus of this lecture amorphous materials or non crystalline materials as i told they lack the long, long range order the atoms ions or molecules embedded or associated with this amorphous materials are having random random variation orientation or asymmetric they have only local symmetry you can see here only atoms are here but the same number same type of atoms are not repeated throughout the matrix or throughout the crystal so they are uh, amorphous material non crystalline materials so there there is a one competitive question up to now the statement i can make it in the form of a statement crystalline materials they have long range order whereas amorphous material they have only local symmetry or they lack long range order the added competitive question or entry question is generally crystalline materials or have very long very high melting point compared to maybe covalent solids covalent solids or 
ionic solids they have a very large melting point compared to the covalent solids because in crystalline material the the long range is maintained to break all those bonds you require more energy so crystalline sodium chloride will melt at a high temperature about 700 degree whereas covalent solids covalent materials covalent compounds they they melt at a very low temperature or the boiling point is very okay so i think i made it clear what are crystalline materials and amorphous materials when i say crystalline material and it must orient in any one of seven crystal systems any one of the seven crystal systems so these are all some few example cubic tetragonal hexagonal etc before i let me come uh, in go to that let me introduce what is crystal lattice this is a platinum grain maybe a monolith and it consists of platinum atoms so this you can obtain from the scanning tunneling microscope such nature or such morphology or position of at platinum atom you can obtain from the stm now you replace all these platinum positions platinum atomic positions with some imaginary point that imaginary points are known as lattice positions or lattice points or crystal lattice because it is obtained from the crystal and using this crystal maybe you can make in the form of a cube tetragonal hexagonal whatever the orientation it gives that's the crystal lattice we have here two types of lattices two dimensional crystal lattice and a three dimensional lattice so two dimensional means so, so you don't have a third dimension maybe you can see here if this is a two dimensional crystal and it maintains the symmetry all along the two dimension what is important is the so three dimensional symmetry these are all th examples for uh, three dimensional symmetry so you can have x axis y axis z axis i think so let me go to the next slide so this will give the better view this is the three dimensional view of the crystal so it is having a x axis y axis z axis and the crystal size may be maybe 10 nanometer or 1 micrometer 10 micrometer or a meter very large and it is a crystalline material the smallest unit the smallest repeating unit of a whole crystal is known as unit cell this is also intrigue question when you go for phd definitely such questions are asked define unit cell what is an unit cell the smallest repeating unit of a unit of a crystalline material or crystal which has got all the properties of a whole crystal is known as unit cell how will you characterize the unit cell we have unit cell parameters we have six unit cell parameters otherwise known as lattice constants lattice constants so you have six lattice constant a b c that is the edge sizes a h for example this is a cube if this is a this is b and this is c all three cartesian the size edge size or length then alpha beta gamma what is the angle between a and b what is the angle between b and c what is the angle between a and c a b c alpha beta gamma these are the six lattice constant parameters which are used to characterize any unit cell the combination of all these six six lattice parameters gives you seven crystal systems the most asymmetry is triclinic you can see that a is not equal to b is not equal to c or is not equal to a or similarly alpha is not equal to beta is not equal to gamma is not equal to 90 the most asymmetry or asymmetry or uh, uh, or the shapeless uh, structure or the unit cell is triclinic then we have monoclinic orthorhombic trigonal hexagonal tetragonal and the most pretty is cubic system this is the cubic system all the edges are equal a b c are equal equal and 5 cm 5 cm 5 cm 5 cm and the alpha beta gamma alpha beta gamma the angle between the cartesian coordinates are the edges are all equal not only are they are all equal they are also equal to 90 
such system is a cubic such a system is a cubic all others have either it's not equal to 90 or is not equal they are not equal or a and b are equal in the case of tetragonal is not equal to c angles are equal to 90 etc the combination of all six parameters gives you seven crystal systems and this is a cube one example is copper when you make a copper crystal in material it crystallizes in a cubic when i say cubic the copper atom can be present in all the six uh, eight edges eight eight corners any cube in a cube has eight edges eight corners 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 then these edges 12 edges and six faces and one center these are all the edges these are all the edges and six faces and one center these atoms ions or molecules they can present on the corner on the face are on the edges or in the center based on the position of the atoms ions or molecules we have bravius lattices for cubic we have three bravius lattices just fcc face and uh, just simple cubic the atoms ions are present only on the corners then we have body centered in addition to corner the atom science molecule can present in the center of the body of cube also or on the all the faces so they are named like this simple cubic or primitive body centered bcc if it is a cubic and face centered if it is a cubic fcc similarly for other crystal system depending on the position they can location they can present we have 14 bravius lattices and the triclinic has only simple simple triclinic there are no body center triclinic there are no face center triclinic it has only simple triclinic so you have so primitive unit cell body center unit cell and face center unit cell and c center unit cell so we have seven crystal system and 14 bravius lattices i will add another two three numbers two numbers this is also a competitive exam interview question what is the relation between 7 14 32 and 230 or sometimes 231 or 232 by now you know there are seven crystal systems and 14 bravius lattices crystals they have symmetry this the most pretty is cubic and it can be reflected it can be reflected it can be rotated so reflection on this plane it gives a same symmetry or rotation through this axis gives the symmetry the combination of rotation reflection is known as cree axis so if you combine them you can create 32 point groups and 232 space groups in the solids you have a molecular point groups molecular point groups and you have 231 space groups that comes because of presence of reflection followed by a reflection and a screw axis so that's the relation between 7 14 32 232 and 230 or 231 7 crystal system 14 bravius lattices 32 point group and there is a distinction molecular point group and a crystallographic point group molecular point group uses shog and flies notation crystallographic point group uses hermann meigen notations and you have 231 space groups if you know space group if you know the symbol of a space group or if you if is a space group is written you can know what is the point group what is the bravius type uh, lattice and what is the crystal system so that is why so most all the materials so far known if it is a crystal material and their space group has been identified and available and you need to know arrive that space group and once you know the space group you can know what is the crystal structure it is whether cubic triclinic monoclinic bravius lattice whether c centered a centered c centered, bcc fcc etc you can this is the symmetry i was talking to when i say cubic uh, cubic uh, structure or cubic crystal so it has got four fold axis of 
fourfold axis. What is fourfold axis? Rotation C 360 by n. Rotation by 90 degree. It is having three such rotations. And twofold rotational axis. Such numbers are six. So rotation by 180 degree, you can get the same symmetry. Okay, such symmetry axes are available. Six numbers. Where it is available, and I will not be spending time on that. So just know. Okay, so they have got cubic system has got four fold rotation axis, three numbers, three fold rotation axis. That is rotation by one twenty degree. So four numbers and two fold uh, uh, two fold uh, rotation axis, six numbers. So these characterizes the uh, symmetry, cubic symmetry. Cubic symmetry, but once you become so, you can have your mirror images, etc. Once the the symmetry is reduced, when you move from cubic to tetragonal, you see that there is a reduction in the symmetry. This is a cube. This is a cube. All the edges are equal, and A, B, C, alpha, beta are gamma same. Cubic. This is tetragonal. This is tetragonal. What is this tetragonal? Elongated cubic or compressed cubic is the tetragonal. What happened? What are the symmetries lost? The cubic has four, three fourfold axes, whereas tetragonal has only one fourfold axis. Cubic has cubic structure has a four, three, and threefold axis, but it has lost the threefold, threefold axis. It has only twofold, two, three, twofold axis. So there is a reduction in the symmetry when we move from cubic to tetragon. Just elongated or compressed, so many changes in the crystal structure or uh, the, 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 the symmetries. So the best examples are sodium chloride, also known as rock salt structure, and uh, you know that. So in a cubic, so one corner is attached to eight cubes, or the contribution is one by eight. I am coming to that. So the any 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 cube, the corner is shared by eight such cubes. The contribution is one by eight, and the face is shared by another neighbor. So the contribution is one by two, and the body is it's only located inside. So uh, fully shared within this uh, this uh, cube, the the contribution is one. Yet just are shared by so at least four. So four. So the contribution is one by four. So this brings. In a given primitive unit cell, how many molecules can be there? Ions can be there. For example, so for sodium chloride, so it is FCC if FCC crystal. So you can see that the contribution of face centered or cubic or body centered, etc. So there are four NaCl moieties in a in a, in a NaCl. So like this, you can arrive at for any crystalline materials. Any crystalline materials. How does crystalline material sodium chloride looks in a crystallographic structure? This is how it looks. You have your chlorine, so chlorine ion, sodium ion, chlorine ion, and you have four radius, two sodium and two chlorine. That is the characteristic of sodium chloride cubic lattice. And there is a numerical problem, competitive exam, gate question, and CSR question based on this. And I don't have time. Maybe I have few questions at the end. And cesium chloride is the best example for uh, primitive crystals. Primitive crystal only at the corners. Zinc blend is another example. Perovskite, a valuable material. Oxide ion conductor material. Perovskite. Spinels, another fascinating material. Battery material, supercapacitor material, catalysis material, magnetic materials are many available. Spinels and it is a cubic materials and their structure and all these structures can be obtained from X-ray diffraction and most of the known elements and at what crystal they crystal crystalline structure they crystallize has been already established has been established even the hydrogen if you crystallize it crystallizes in closed cubic packing lithium crystallizes in body centered cubic. Though we have so many elements, only one element crystallizes in the simple cubic. That is polonium. You can identify where it is here. Polonium. 
that only crystallizes in a simple pp all others are bcc hcp or uh, hexagonal etc only polonium crystallizes in a simple cube so using powder x ray or uh, using x ray diffraction i don't say powder using x ray diffraction you can arrive all these structures few examples copper aluminum silver gold aram they all crystallize in face centered cube chromium alpha and molybdenum they crystallize in bcc body centered cube cadmium magnesium zinc titanium they crystallize in hexagonal closed packing structures so how will you arrive those crystal structures for that only you require x ray diffraction i think i am almost exhausted more than 50 minutes now only i am going to start the topic now if i introduce crystal structure x ray diffraction i am sure it will it will benefit you it will give more better understanding so before we go to the x ray diffraction let's see what are x ray what are x rays it's a one of the electromagnetic spectrum or electromagnetic radiation we have electromagnetic radiation the highest radiation is gamma radiation it is emitted from the nuclear reactivity nuclear reaction then we have x ray ultraviolet visible infrared microwave radio wave long wave or tv waves etc the gamma rays are the highest energetic electromagnetic radiation and next comes x rays very narrow then we have ultraviolet radiation up to this highly dangerous it is dangerous to get exposed to x rays gamma rays ultraviolet they damage the dna serious problem occurs visible radi radiation is very narrow it ranges from 380 nanometer to 740 nanometer or so or roughly 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer is the very narrow visible big gr you know then comes infrared radiation micro radiation radio waves tv waves and long waves etc all they have all they have their own characteristic and uh, features and they can be quantified or characterized using wave length wave number etc or frequency i am not going into the details how will you generate x ray x ray can be generated with the help of beam of electron by targeting a metal surface you need to have a metal surface that may be a copper molybdenum chromium iron etc cobalt etc and then accelerate with a high high energy electrons so the this electron the the, the 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 metals they can, the electrons present in the orbitals of metals can be lifted when they fall they fall to the ground state it will emit the x rays accelerating electrons targeted to the metals will generate x rays x rays are generated using coolidge tube you know that is the textbook uh, information that you study in the is course so when we have a copper as a target and you bombard with the high energy electrons so you have a shells k shell l shell m shell n shell etc etc so the energy of the electron is so high it can even lift the core shell electrons present in the atoms metals metal atoms so when the when the vacancy or the hole is created or the void is created or the hole is created so immediately the electron from the higher energy can fall when the electron from the higher energy fall it emits a characteristic x ray wavelength it so happened that copper emits a characteristic wavelength of 1.54 angstrom molybdenum 0.71 chromium 2.29 little longer wavelength wavelength and the, again there is a competitive exam question or interview question regarding this we have a k beta k alpha emission which is intense why why the wavelength of one is longer or higher why we have a weight emission all those things i will to lack of time i am not going into that so most prominently used right radiation for x ray diffraction is copper k alpha radiation that is the highest high intensity x ray that is emitted okay now you take this x ray and make interact make interaction with the sample your solid sample so whenever an x ray is allowed to interact with a solid sample these phenomena can take place 
it can be absorbed and the material can get heated up or it can emit x rays scatter x rays or transmit x rays or you can have a uh, crompton crompton coil or photoelectron emissions this x ray diffraction diffraction technique uses the scattered x rays scattered x rays from the sample there is a dedicated x ray diffractometer diffractometer so used for knowing or identifying or quantifying or analyzing the intensity of scattered rays or diffracted x rays it 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 ranges from about 1 crore to uh, 2 crore or affordable larger price is available typically 1 crore if you have a 1 crore rupees indian rupees it is possible to buy one a standard or normal nominal x-ray diffractometer and it has got these many dev, uh, uh, components i'm not going into the details but let's see what is diffraction we have previously seen when you make a material by some method or any method either it can either it can crystallize in the form of a crystalline material or it can also form amorphous material and we by now we know what are crystalline material and amorphous material crystalline materials their atoms ions or molecular positions are highly symmetric and they maintain long range order all along the three dimensions if you have a one meter of crystal all the three dimensions it will maintain the symmetry unlike local symmetry amorphous amorphous materials have so and the ions atoms are arranged in layers in layer one layer of atom first layer let's assume first layer is n equal to one some number the second layer of atom arrangement ions or molecular arrangement n equal to two and in between there is a separation or distance that distance is known as interlayer distance or interlayer space or spacing between the layers spacing between the layers and we have a crystalline material now you take a coherent x-ray or x-ray allowed to interact with this such sample solid sample what will happen it will undergo scattering or diffraction it will undergo diffraction you see here we have a one x-ray ray ray one and it makes interaction with the sample surface and gets diffracted this is incoming radiation it has got characteristic wavelength wavelength and outgoing or after scattered or diffracted wavelength has the same characteristic wavelength, but their intensities are different. When, if they are diffracted with the path difference, what is path difference? So there are no path difference. There can be no path difference for the ray one because it is in, uh, diffracting and going out. Let's consider incoming X-ray ray two. It interacts and from here it is diffracted it is diffracted after certain distance they are all same coherent the diffracted ray one and the diffracted ray two are in same phase or different phase we will come to that later or before it interacts up to certain distance the ray incoming x-ray one incoming x-ray two are in same phase or same intensity but the ray two travels little longer distance a plus b is the longer distance the ray two travels we call this as a path difference there is a path difference for the x-ray two that is interacting or undergoing diffraction with the crystals and the path difference is a plus b or bc a plus bc Okay, so the ray two travels extra distance of A plus AB plus BC, AB plus BC, and then you have a in outgoing or diffracted diffracted X rays, and the incoming X ray has an intensity. It has a wavelength. Outgoing or diffracted in X ray has an intensity and wavelength. You will be able to detect the diffracted intensity. From this crystal, when we have a path difference of n lambda order, or otherwise, the path difference, if it is in n multiples of wavelength, then we will have a constructive interference of these X rays 
as we know that whenever any waves are or radiations are having a constructive interference you will have a large intensity you will have a measurable intensity what is constructive inter interference they are in same phase up down up down up down so if the two waves are overlapping with their hops and crabs so they have they are, they, are, they are said to be in the phase or they are undergoing constructive interference the intensity of diffracted wavelength will be larger if they are destructive interference so up and down will cancel you will not be having a much measurable intensity destructive interference so in order to have a constructive interference or in order to have a measurable intensity of the diffracted radiation the second wavelength second x ray traveling with the extra distance or the path difference ab plus bc should be in multiples of wavelength n multiples of wavelength where n wave, lambda is the wavelength of incoming x ray and n is the order of diffraction if n equal to 1 we call it as a first order diffraction in even n equal to 2 second order different n equal to 3 third order etc generally the intensity of the first order x ray diffraction is large and it is the most practically used of course you second and second order also first order diffraction alone it's enough to measure the intensities or to know the crystal structures and you can you can see that ab B plus ab plus bc is the additional distance the second ray is traveling and it so happened that ab is equal to bc according to this r so 2ab is equal to n lambda 2ab equal to n lambda i can construct a right triangle here two right triangle i can construct here a right triangle consisting of oab oab is a right triangle and the, X, the incoming x ray wavelength is making a angle theta and when it is diffracted the same angle is diffracted theta similarly so second come incoming second x ray also is making a angle to theta and it is diffracted with the theta okay so when this is theta the inside inner angle also i can assume i can we can make it as a uh, theta according to the triangle formula so it is a right triangle a b o a b is a right triangle in a right triangle you can define what is sin theta it is a b by o b a b by o b opposite side and uh, uh, the other one a b by d or a b by o b what is a b what is o b o b we know it is a interplanar distance or the spacing between the two layers o b what is ab 2ab equal to n lambda and ab equal to, you can substitute or you can substitute any these two equation you will be able to get 2d sin theta equal to n lambda or n lambda equal to sin theta this is known as diffraction condition or bracks condition and this equation is also known as bracks equation whenever this diffraction condition is met you will get measurable diffracted constructive interference whenever not you will not be able to get a measurable deductible intensity you will not get a diffracted intensity diffracted intensity so this is the bracks equation or diffraction condition using which you can obtain if all other quantities are known for example if theta is known diffracted intensity in diffracted angle and lambda anyway x ray wavelength you know 5.14 is the copper wavelength and n is the first order diffraction and all quantities you know it is possible to establish lab b which is known as d spacing in a crystalline material in any solid material there may be a several d spacing there are several layers of atoms ions or molecules are arranged okay so layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 etc first order second order third order etc so similarly the diffraction angle will be n multiples n lambda 2n lambda 3n lambda etc this is how it can have many generally intensity of this first order is largest and which is very much used so when i say several layers of uh, atoms ions molecules will be there 
and they undergo they they make x ray to incoming x ray to undergo diffraction and you measure the intensity intensity that is the intensity with respect to what you measure you with respect to theta you measure or 2 theta you measure once you know that theta or 2 theta using this brax equation it is possible to obtain that d spacing so this x x axis can become 2 theta or d spacing a collection of d spacing or collection of brac peaks is known as x ray diffraction pattern x ray diffraction how will you obtain you have a 2 theta value that is the intensity of cons intensity consisting of diffracted radiation as well as the transmitted radiation you you can see here so this is incoming radiation incoming radiation and it is diffracted if it is the part may be diffracted part may be transmitted this is incoming radiation part it is diffracted part may be transmitted so you measure the full 2 theta intensity gives the intensity of transmitted intensity uh, x rays and as well as the diffracted x ray intensity so to what we know what we want is only diffracted intensity so from the 2 theta you get the theta that is the diffracted rays intensity once you know the theta you make the sin theta and use the uh, bragg equation you get the d spacing use d spacing so given a diffraction angle diffraction intensity it is possible to obtain a d spacing the collection of collection of d spacing is the x ray diffraction with some intensity generally it will be like this believe it or not this is the x ray diffraction pattern of aluminum aluminum you have a 1 1 1 plane large intensity and low intensity other peaks 220 2 2 2 1 2 2 0 2 0 3 1 1 2 2 2 4 0 0 etc so whenever you get this kind of x ray diffraction pattern and you believe it or not you can blindfold and accept it is aluminum when i say like this means the position of these peaks should be identical identical if so then it is aluminum if only few peaks are matching few peaks are not matching it is not aluminum it may be some other material the position of the collection collection of brack peaks and their position is very are very important to to characterize any solid samples so for example so this is the x ray diffraction of alpha iron has got three peaks you can you can tell it will have only one peak three peak four peak etc if it is a single crystalline material you will get only one peak if it is a polycrystalline material whatever the number of crystallites you have type of crystallites you have you will get same number of peaks so for example here alpha iron polycrystalline material it is having 111 phase 200 and 211 phase what is 211 phase it refers to this phase what is 200 phase so it refers to this phase what is 111 phase it refers to if you know the miller how to get the miller indices miller indices almost equal to brack plane how to get the miller indices so you know how much where it is touching the cartesian coordinate you take the inverse of that then you take the full number that's how you get the miller indices okay so this is the alpha iron it is amorphous alpha iron can also be made in the form of a single crystalline that is different but this is polycrystalline it crystallizes in bcc so so you can you can have several applications i am done with the basics of uh, x ray diffraction so material must be crystalline in order to get the diffracted peak or brack peaks if it is amorphous material or non crystalline material you will not get any peak you will get only pattern you will get only zigzag no intense peak only some fluorescence what we call it is a fluorescence or no peak that is the characteristic of amorphous material but crystalline material will show peaks several peaks if it is a nickel characteristic nickel x ray diffraction pattern it will show if it is cobalt it will show cobalt characteristic peaks. similarly titanium oxide or any other crystalline materials so x ray diffraction has got several merits or application 
it is the available non destructive ex, uh, 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 characterization method what is non destructive you can make x ray diffraction pattern of your sample and you can reuse it not much damage is caused to the sample unlike other spectros other other characterization tool for example nmr you cannot retrieve it u visible maybe to some extent you can retrieve it and it is one of the non destructive characterization tools it means after making the x ray diffraction you can reuse the sample and a relatively rapid powder x ray diffraction is the relatively rapid technique when i say relatively rapid within within 30 minutes not even 30 minutes i can tell depending on the scan rate 17 minutes are enough to characterize one material to get the x ray diffraction of a, any solid material 17 minutes are enough so between if you want to scan from 5 to theta to 72 theta hardly you have 65 to theta degrees and if it is a 4 degrees per minute it's roughly about 17 minutes or in worst cases or in best cases 30 minutes are enough to get the x ray diffraction powder x ray diffraction and it is quick relatively quick or fast and this x ray diffraction uh, x ray diffraction pattern it should not be called as a spectrum please remember x ray diffraction pattern it should not be called as a x ray diffraction spectrum it's wrong because spectrum involves a transition there is no transition here no, there is no transition of electron or ion between the ground state and excited state it's only scattering or diffraction so you should call as a x ray diffraction pattern or profile to some uh, commonly but it should not be called as a x ray diffraction spectrum okay so this x ray diffraction pattern is very much useful in identifying the compounds and their phases when i say phases cubic triclinic monoclinic etc and what phases whether a mixture is consisting of nickel and cobalt it's possible to distinguish and sometimes this x ray diffraction can be used to quantify the phases when i say phases consider a, a compound or a mixture consisting of titanium oxide maybe and gold and both are if they are crystalline you take the x ray diffraction how much gold is present how much titanium oxide is present you, to the maximum extent you can quantify and you can know what is the crystallinity of the material what is the crystallite size of the material whether the material is having some defect you know the material not only human can have the defect crystals can have the defect the very nature of the x ray diffraction is the crystal should have a defect then otherwise it won't it won't uh, diffract crystalline having defect you can know whether it is having a strain or dislocation etc what kind of orientation whether it is 1 1 1 plane orientation or 2 2 2 plane very much you can understand from x ray diffraction but there are limitation it's a high high equipment high end equipment very large price and it cannot be taken to any places it should be kept in one place use it okay it can be kept in one place and must be used it okay so so it's, it's a huge expense you need to that is the limitation sometimes radiation damage occurs especially so when when you want to analyze uh, some big crystals for example sodium chloride by x ray diffraction sodium chloride we know it is a white solid but after x ray diffraction you will see that it instead of white it might be sometimes pale yellow radiation damage it induces some vacancies or interstitial defect so causing uh, uh, this uh, sodium chloride to become defect material otherwise so many materials are highly stable in x ray diffraction after x ray diffraction that's why it is one of the non destructive x ray diffraction so you can very well use this uh, material this uh, technique to characterize what solid material it is provided if it is a crystalline material so for example any this this material tin nickel oxide can be prepared by salt gel method any pg lab so you take a chelating agent make a gel fire it then finally calcine at 500 degree you get a solid to that solid you take a x ray diffraction it will come like this and it can be indexed the process of identifying is known as indexing you don't have to scratch these days computer can test your one software is there you it will if you feed the uh, 
uh, experimental X-ray data, it will fit the possible option and the best option it will give. This material is nickel oxide. And you see that if there are no impurities. If there are impurities, it will show. It means the, the brand peaks other than nickel oxide is an impurity. Other than nickel is nickel oxide is an impurity. So we call we have a standard X-ray diffraction, but for most of the materials that has been identified so far, and it has been available during our PHS date, it used to be available in a CD. These days it is available online also, ICCD, ICCD. So they maintain these standards, X-ray diffraction standards, JCPD, what PDS, what we call uh, Joint Council for Powder Diffraction Standards, JCPDS card, very well known as this is what. So this is the JCPDS number 29 bar, bar hyphen 0063. It is aluminum oxide. So this is available online, maybe a separate uh, software is available. When you buy X-ray diffraction equipment, along with that, this is freely mostly given. And you put this number and it is aluminum oxide and you get the standard X-ray diffraction pattern. And you have intensity. So then these peak portions are very important to theta and it can be converted into theta also using Bragg equation. We have seen it. And it is already indexed. Standard pattern is available. So this first peak 29, 19.596 uh, belongs to 111 of aluminum oxide or 45.827. 45.827 is 400 peak of aluminum oxide. So what you have to do, you have to run you make a material aluminum oxide, you take the X-ray diffraction and compare the peak portion. Intensity may be different depending on the method, okay? But peak portion should be identical, whether I make or uh, Dr. Vasi Malai or anybody else, any one of you make, you will get identical pattern. And if the peak portions are identical, blindfold and accept, it is aluminum oxide. Intensity may vary, peak portions are important. Two theta and D value will be identical. There may be some experimental error, maybe one very very few, 0.1 percentage, etc. But if the all the peak portions are identical and it is uh, aluminum oxide. So I, I have taken one example, aluminum oxide. It can be a copper, titanium oxide, or tin oxide, or any other spinel oxide, perovskite, etc. Very versatile to tool to characterize X-ray diffraction. What we have to do, you make a material, if they crystallize, either polycrystalline, single crystalline, you go for X-ray diffraction, note the peak intensity and the peak portion. Peak portions are very important. Then compare with the standard X-ray diffraction. If they are matching, if all the peaks, are, all peaks are should all peaks should match. That is very important. Not only one peak is matching, only few peaks are matching. Maybe if all the peaks are matching, you may have impurities. If it is having impurity, that you can designate as an impurities, but all other uh, characteristic peaks of that material should match. Then only, so it is that material. Titanium oxide, tin oxide, tin co cobalt, nickel, iron, or perovskite, etc. Solid material can be characterized using X-ray diffraction. And there is a standard uh, software is available or uh, program is available, which fits for you. And not only fits for you, it also gives many other information. I told you, polycrystalline material consists of many crystallites. What is the crystallized size you can obtain from X-ray diffraction? And this is very much useful in characterizing nanomaterials or nano, 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 nanoparticles. So the very characteristic of nanoparticle X-ray diffraction is you get broad peak. Broad peak. Because one reason is in non-crystalline material or nanomaterials, the number of atoms, ions, or molecules are not no longer 10 power 23. I've got a number. It is less. Only countable number of countable atoms, ions are there. When we have a countable number of atoms, ions, or molecules are there, the intensity coming from these countable number of atoms, ions, or molecules are less number of atoms will be less, and it leads to broadening. And the peak broadening also due to many other problems. Need not be only crystallite size and nano size. It may be instrumental problem. Or the crystal may be having a uh, defect. It may be having a strain, twisted, thinning, we call it. So then you will you will get a broad, broad peak. Or if it is a solid solution, cobalt, nickel, if you make an alloy, or silver and gold, if you make an alloy, if the alloy composition is not homogeneous, if it is inhomogeneity, then some peaks may be broad. 
that should not be taken as a crystallite size or nanoparticle broadening only nano the, the size due to crystallite size is the uh, characteristic for nano size this is what i am talking about so if the crystallite is having this kind of uh, fine nature because fine crystals big crystals polycrystals you get narrow peak so once the uh, crystallite size or the bulk material is made into nano if it is having a less you have a multiple peak broad peak if it is a nano materials very small crystallites you get very broad peak this is the characteristic of nano structured materials nano structured material generally nano particles have very broad peak that is the characteristic the same material if it is a bulk you get a very short peak like this short peak broad peak so you can quantify how much is the crystallite size for example in this case nickel oxide synthesized by some method using citrate or oxalate as an chelating agent so you can quantify how much is the crystallite size using this standard equation known as serer equation beta r that is full width the size is the l l equal to the bra the, the crystallite size l at some particular hkl is known is equal to 0.9 lambda divided by beta cos theta. 0.9 is a constant, Schiller constant known as. It varies from 0.6 to 0.9, maximum is 0.9. And lambda is the X-ray wavelength. And beta is the full width at top maximum. And theta, theta is the diffraction angle. What is this beta and uh, uh, theta? So for example, this is the part of X-ray diffraction. You have to run at a very slow scan. So this is occurring at 40, 43 point, 43 point, how much? Uh, 43.32. This is a part of X-ray. This X-ray, 40, 50, 45, 43. So only this region has been scanned at a very slow scan and is given here. And this, this peak portion is the two theta. Half of that is so theta. You get the diffraction angle. Okay. Then what is the FWHM or full width at top maximum? So this is zero intensity, maximum intensity. Half is somewhere here. You take the half intensity here. Take the difference, divide by two, you get in degree. That degree must be converted into radians by multiplying 3.142 by 180. You get degree into radians. That is your full width at top maximum. Already you know lambda and the nine is there. Theta you are getting from here. And beta now you are getting that is the full width at top maximum FWHM. All quantities now you have, and you can estimate Schirer grain size or average grain size. This is typically in uh, Armstrong. If it is very small size, you can give it in the nanometer. You can obtain crystallite size. What is that crystallite size? Your polycrystal consists of several crystallites. That crystal, average crystallized size is the crystallized size you can get from X-ray diffraction. Many a time people confuse what is crystalline size, crystallized size and a particle size, grain size. This is the difference. The size that you are getting from X-ray diffraction is known as crystallite size. But the size you can get, you are getting from microscope is particle size or grain size. Your particle may have many crystallites or a grain may have a many crystallites. Crystallite size and the particle size or grain sizes are not same, they are different. Crystallite size that you get from X-ray diffraction, particle size or grain size you are getting from a, a SEM, SEM, SEM. Okay, so you can also distinguish, as I told, composite or phases. For example, someone has prepared, my, one of my students has prepared this material, the nano composite. It consists of nickel and nickel oxide. By following this procedure, so he has varied some concentration of the nickel, nickel nitrate, and one is to eight to one is to one. And you can see here, and for that, the X ray diffraction is taken. And you see here, when the, when the concentration of citrate, uh, mighty, and uh, nickel nitrate is one is to eight, you get one pattern. And if you change, you get both nickel oxide and nickel. No other technique will give you clear such information. You know the presence of nickel and nickel oxide clearly by using X-ray diffraction, powder X-ray diffraction. So like this, if it is having a gold silver, 
you, you can also characterize alloys. Vegard's law you can use if it is alloy, metallic alloys. The, the lattice parameter you can estimate. So each, if given any, 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 lattice, uh, any crystal system, there is a relation between lattice constant and the diffraction inter, uh, interlayer spacing, D spacing. Okay. So you can estimate the lattice constant. You can plot lattice constant versus, versus the composition. If it is following a linearity, it is known as Beckard's law. You can predict the composition of the alloy. So you can very much know what are the components present in a composite or a mixture. You can distinguish alloy or a mixture using X-ray diffraction. There are many merits of uh, this X-ray diffraction. I think I'm done with that. Next slide. Uh, I have some questions. So you believe in or believe, believe or not, there are at least a significant number of questions are asked in gate exams and CSR exams from X-ray diffraction. These are few questions. Calculate the angle at which first order diffraction and the second order diffraction will occur in X-ray diffractometer when X-ray of wavelength 1.54 is diffracted by a lattice plane having interplanar distance of 4.04 angstrom. What are quantities given? D is given and uh, lambda is given and uh, you are asked to estimate n what else is given yes so you are asked to estimate so first order diff diffraction angle theta you are asked to estimate for the first order and also for the second order for first order n equal to 1 and the second order n equal to 2 lambda is same and d is 4.04 what is the first order diffraction angle? Second order diffraction angle, you can estimate. This is a gate exam question, RCS exam question. Then another question, when a gold nanopowder was subjected to X-ray using X-ray diffraction using copper copper radiation, the 111 peak was centered at 38.7. I think you can go ahead. So use this Schirer equation or uh, the Bragg equation to arrive the question. You can expect definitely one or two questions in the gate and CSR exams from X-ray diffraction. Thank you very much. Vedita. Thank you so much, sir, for your stimulating presentation. It's very kind of you to accept our invitation even in your very busy schedule and delivered it in such a wonderful way. You elaborately you. explained about the crystal system, symmetries, and Bragg's law so that we can understand in a better way. In addition to that, you have also used models to make the session interesting. You explained everything in XRD from the basic to the complicated details. We are very sure that the students are much benefited by your presentation, sir, and we are very grateful for you. Your presentation showed your years of research, your depth of understanding science, and your ability to present the subject in such an interesting way produced one of the best sessions in our one-month summer internship. On behalf of Crescent family, I thank you so much, sir. I now, hand, you, over the I now hand over the session to Professor Dr. Vasimali. Thanks, uh, Dr. Vasimali. Yes, sir. Question session, sir. Thereafter, you can discuss, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, it's our pleasure to have a chance to uh, hear uh, one excellent talk from uh, Professor Devolusher, Dr. Yelumalai. Uh, First, here's my sincere thanks to Professor Dr. Yelumalai for his uh, kind acceptance of our invitation. Uh, thank you, thank you. Very busy for you. Professor has delivered a talk almost uh, one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, I am also in you. Once again, my sincere thanks to Professor Yale Malay for his outstanding talk. Uh, Professor, we have received several questions uh, in charting box of YouTube and uh, Zoom link. Can I ask yeah. that question? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, this question asked by... <laughs> Which book is best to study XRD diffraction? Yeah, people usually tell Kaliti. Kaliti or Kaliti. That's the basic book. Uh, when we have done a coursework and uh, during PhD, that book we usually followed. But uh, 
most of the solid state uh, book deals with the x-ray diffraction for example ar west gives a uh, uses x ray diffraction and uh, we have uh, similar to er west uh, uh, professor j gopalakrishnan and professor c n rao's book uh, new directions in the solid state chemistry that also gives any solid state chemistry book will give you kaliti is one of the mostly widely used uh, book even shriver atkins also give you okay yeah Next, please. Uh, sir, are air sensitive not samples for X-ray diffraction? Yes, air sensitive. Air sensitive uh, sample. It is yes. So kindly excuse me. I will put on my fan. So difficult to see. Put on. You may get a little noise. So, yes, please, sir. No issue. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, no issue. Uh, see this air sensitive samples it's difficult to take x-ray diffraction because on the intensity we be coming out uh, it, it, the intensity the different intensity is difficult to get it is applicable only for solids not hygroscopic solids liquids as a sample is difficult to get x-ray you need to have a solid sample i would i would uh, i would suggest for example liquid i don't say liquid sample colloidal sample x-ray diffraction can be taken let me tell how Direct colloidal sample cannot be taken X-ray diffraction, but what you have to do is you have to convert the colloid into solid. How will you convert colloid into solid? Maybe you can evaporate it. If it is easily evaporating a solvent, uh, you evaporate it or heat it. Maybe if it is a water-containing colloid, water can be evaporated at 100 degree. The remaining solid must be solid only. Material will be solid only. For example, cold colloid. You can evaporate the solid uh, liquid phase and you get the solid. If it forms a crystalline, you can take X-ray diffraction. The other option to get the colloidal samples X-ray diffraction, you pour it in some inert matrix, for example, carbon matrix, or some inert oxide which will not react with your colloid. For example, generally, if you want to take X-ray diffraction of cold colloid, so directly colloid cannot be taken because it, there is no diffraction in the liquid. Okay, what we do is we we pour this uh, cold colloid in the uh, inert matrix, matrix, for example, graphite solid. Then dry it. Then together you take the X-ray diffraction. So then, so you now you have taken the X-ray diffraction of carbon and the gold. Separately, you take the carbon dioxide. You eliminate those peaks. The remaining peak mass peaks are assigned to must be assigned to the gold. Or instead of carbon or graphite, you can also make some inert solids, inert solid like uh, alumina, magnesia, etc. So like that, you can take colloidal sample, liquid sample, gaseous sample, powder X-ray diffraction cannot be taken. So it must be ultra dry. So it need not be powder; it can be thin film also fine. Thin film will give you X-ray diffraction. It need not be single crystal, multi crystalline. You will get peak. I hope I answered. Thanks, sir. Uh, yeah. One more question: uh, Some crystal may get damaged due to X-rays. Such yes. a case, how to know the study about the crystal that is? Yeah, so we call this as a radiational damage. So I don't think, for example, so I'm not expertise in single crystal X-ray. Uh, so we have a phenomenon called radiational damage. Uh, as I told one example, sodium chloride, I myself have seen. So when I took X-ray diffraction of sodium chloride, sodium chloride is in the in the, in, the, in the white solid, but after subjecting the X-ray diffraction, it becomes a pale yellow. That phenomena we call it as a radiation damage. What happens is X-ray is a high energy radiation, no doubt. The wavelength is 1.54, very high energy. You convert this 1.54 wavelength into energy, very high. Okay, so this induces the or disturbs as the lattices, lattice position. Maybe it induces the interstitial site, or uh, moves the interstitial ions, or dislocation, etc. So sometimes it is it is it is it is radiation damage of this, but not always, not always. So I don't think it is a it is breaking the crystallized crystals. For example, if you have a single crystal, it won't break the crystals, but it can induce interstitial or vacancies. That kind of uh, defect only damage only it can cause. Yes. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, this question asked by Gogli, our department research scholar. Uh, other than that, uh, particles calculation from de Broglie equation, what yeah. information we can get it from full yeah. length half yeah. half yeah. So, X ray diffraction very much it can be used to know the phases. It means what is the material. If it is a collection, a combination, mixture or alloy, you can identify. You can quantify the different phases and uh, <coughs> you can know the crystalline size. Apart from that, so strain, presence of strain, dislocation can also be made. You can quantify how much is the strain. There is a there is a separate formula for that. You can quantify the strain, dislocation, etc. Using this X-ray diffraction. Yes. Thank, thank you, sir. And uh, this question is Sripriya from uh, Muthurangam College, Thiruvallur. Uh, Madam asked about is can we use plant extract uh, for the uh, to take a characterization for XRD? Yes, plant sir, extract. Plant So that's what I, as I told, liquid sample, colloidal samples directly cannot be taken in X-ray diffraction. It has to be converted into solid. But when you convert into solid, it will lose its property, definitely. Okay, okay so plant extracted sample, uh, if, if it is in the form of a colloid, it is not possible to take the X-ray diffraction. You have to convert that into solid, then it loses its property. It may change the material also, who knows. But colloidal sample can be taken in X-ray diffraction by converting it to solid as I told. Either you, you, you pour it in the carbon or in an inert matrix or you operate completely. If it is not changing the reaction or if it's not inducing any reaction, you can remove the solvent and take the powder X-ray diffraction provided if it provides X-ray diffraction. So by doing so, it might become amorphous also. You may not, you may not get any practice. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, how we can determine the impurities from XRD analysis? This question asked by Kul, sir. Again, Government Arts College, Sengalpattu. Yeah. So, so impurities, they result due to various reasons. <laughs> okay. So, if it is a solid sample, you subject the material that you obtained for powder extraction. Generally, you will, if it is a multi-crystalline or polycrystalline material, you will get collection of peaks. All the peaks must be assigned or indexed according to the standard pattern. After assigning most of the peaks, if you get one or two peaks, that is what, which is not possible to index and which may not be belongs to that material, that is impurity. Sometimes it may be very high intensity also, we encounter. Sometimes very low intensity. What we do is, so it is very difficult to remove the impurity from the solid sample. Maybe in the liquid, maybe distillation or fractional distillation, one can, depending on the uh, boiling point, you can remove. But in solids, very difficult to remove the impurities. There is a method also you can melt it. If they have a different melting point, you can melt it to one temperature, go to high temperature, you can decant it. But it's very difficult. But what we do is we do declare it. It is present, you declare it by designating yeah, some, some symbol for that practice. Very much it is possible to identify the purity or defect present with the impurities present in the sample. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And this question asked by our master students, uh, Gunasegaran. Uh, he said, uh, generally we can calculate the particle size from transmission electron microscopy image, but here I have calculated the particle size from XRD using the scalar equations. So Science. whether this uh, value uh, from scalar equations, so this value whether should be matched with the whichever we got from transmission electron microscope or it is a theoretical value. Is there any correlation between that value and this value? Yeah, this is a very good question. So generally there is a misconception. So I didn't say particle size from the, the size that you get from X-ray diffraction. I said very clearly it is crystallite size. It should not be called as a particle size or grain size. 
the size that you get from Scherer formula he is known as crystallite size, which will not be equal to the size that you can get from microscope, whether whether it is a SEM or TEM. Maybe TEM, maybe. SEM, SEM, especially electron microscope particle size or grain size will not match with the crystallite size. In fact, it will be 10 times the difference. Many people, they have a misconception. Sometimes they manipulate to equal. No, it should not, it will not be equal. It should not be equal, it will not be equal. 10 times higher. This is first order size and the second order size. Crystallite size is the second order size, that is the crystallite size, which will be lower compared to the particle size or grain size that you can get from microscope. From transmission electron microscope, sometimes it gives that domain size or crystallite size, that may be equal, that may be equal. Okay, so otherwise, from electron microscope, the size that you are getting is known as grain size or particle size. This will be 10 times larger compared to that of the crystallite size. Crystallite size you get from X-ray diffraction. I hope I have clarified. Yes, sir. Thanks for your excellent answer. I, I also have to think that ask the same question, but you given very good answer for that question. And uh, this question, again, uh, asked by single particle college uh, same cool sir sir uh, generally uh, starting from high intensity the one one plane it is always high intensity but other plane are less intensity is there any theory behind this uh, intensity yes there is a very much theory behind that this is a cube this is a cube and a cube we have faces and uh, we, we can make a crystalline place, crystal planes, or black place, or Miller indices. And this plane is 100 plane. What is 100 plane? So this plane is 100 plane. What is 111 plane in a cubic? That diagonal plane. Diagonal plane. Okay. We have 111 plane, or 222 plane, half of this, half of that. Are diagonal plane like this you can have different planes and assume that this is a material some material copper or silver or any other crystal the number of atoms present on the one on one plane are different number of atoms present on the one on one diagonal plane are different similarly any other plane if the number of atoms present on that plane the diffracted intensity also will be larger. If the number of atoms present in that particular planes are less, the diffracted intensity also will be less. That is the theory behind that. So I think I have shown you one example. If you want, I can repeat it. Alpha and I have shown you, we have a 111 plane, 22 plane or 200 plane. We have a different atoms locating in, this, in these planes. Larger the number of atoms in that particular plane, you get a higher intensity. Lesser the or vice versa. Lesser the number of atoms or ions or molecules, you get lesser intensity. That's the theory behind that. So you can know what atoms present. That is also interview question. Those who are planning for PhD interview, these are all in the, if, if you come definitely, this is a leak question. Such question I will ask. Okay, so depending on the Miller indices or Bragg plane, number of atoms are different you get a different intensity, so the intensities are different, okay? So depending on the method, the intensity may vary, but the question must be same, whether you make or I make or anybody else make. Okay, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, this question asked by Manisha Das, uh, Tripura University. Uh, yeah. Manisha Das asked about, sir, I prepared a sample, but it is a trash quantity. Difficult to get X-ray diffraction. The already I uh, can we able to reuse? Question completed. Yes, sir. Okay, so they already have got a very very trace amount. Yeah, they have got very trace amount of material after X-ray diffraction. They want to reuse it, whether they can reuse or not. That's the question as I understood. 
so generally you require significant amount of mass or the material to get the x-ray diffraction if it is a very trace quantities maybe organic compound you can get nmr ES, esr mass and all but the x-ray diffraction you need to have a very significant quantities some number you 0.5 gram or at least to point to point to gram you require uh, so you have to fill that the sample hold completely to the maximum extent okay then only you get a good intensity peak if you have a less quantity of a sample you get intensity but uh, sometimes very poor intensity you get sometimes you don't get intensity at all if you have a very trace amount right? whether you want to reuse it or not very much you can reuse it except radiation damage the x-ray diffraction equipment or the measurement doesn't damage the material you can very much reuse it but you carefully preserve it and reuse it the surface nature may matter because while handling you may touch the sample you have to press with uh, some uh, that uh, parts crystal also container so that may change the sample but it won't make much changes you can very much reuse it this question uh, from uh, preeti stella marys college uh so can you explain about the preparation of polymer sample and their characterization how to do the xrd patterning other things for uh, polymer samples so let me admit i am not expert in polymer i am expert only in materials that is metal metal oxides hydroxides etc and i am not expert in polymers but there are polymer making materials methods oxidation apc people use what is apc the sulfate oxidation chemical oxidation of aniline will give you polyaniline or electrochemical polymerization also will give you polymer material i am not expert but there are methods available but what i can explain is how to characterize the polymer material so polymer materials generally they give many peaks generally organic compound polymers are organic compound mostly of course there are some inorganic polymer snx or snx is an inorganic polymer one example generally polymers are organic compound and uh, so mostly if you take the x-ray diffraction for the x-ray diffraction of uh, polymers you get a very long several peaks you get people call it as a crystal okay so i do not want to comment on that but it is very difficult to quantify or identify whether it is a cube triclinic monoclinic etc unless it is unless it is done for single crystalline x-ray diffraction study or crystallography or already done it otherwise generally you get many peaks several peaks people best it for this but the, but the polymer that is prepared is crystalline material because he has got many peaks if you don't get peak you blindfold and call it as a amorphous material non crystalline material i think that's the characterization you can do you can restrict to that crystalline or non crystalline sometimes uh, crystallinity people quantify i think that's that's all you can do that it's difficult to identify crystal what is that uh, triclinic monoclinic okay sir thank you sir yeah and this is the last question uh, actually we have received several question because of their time availability i just chosen yeah, some yeah, best yeah. questions uh, this yes. question asked by uh, sinmay uh, majumdar sir uh, when we giving the sample so the people are taking two data value from uh, five two data or 10 two data but can we be able to take from one data one two data is there any uh, sample having the peak at one data Two data, two data value. Yeah, very, 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 very technical question. So very good, very good. So, generally, powder samples we take X-ray diffraction from five two data value to seventy or seventy. Seventy, I would say seventy enough, or at least sixty by two data. You will get all the practical information information within this two data rate right? for any normal solids, solid sample. The bright peaks are the set of bright peaks that you can get from five to theta range to seventy to theta range is enough to index and know the material what material it is by comparing with the standard X-ray diffraction pattern. Fine. There are materials 
uh, we call it as a mesoporous microporous materials. They show peaks less than 5 to theta h. So, not all the excellent diffraction equipment can do this because you have to have the low angle lower. You need to have a special same equipment, but some, some special provision you should be having. Definitely, mesoporous, microporous materials, sometimes nanoporous nano nano materials, they show the peaks below 5 to, five to theta, 5 degrees to theta. They are the characteristic of mesoporous, nanoporous materials. Yes, it is possible. It is possible. And uh, such peaks are known as low angle X ray diffraction or small angle X ray diffraction or wide angle X ray diffraction. Bax is known as X. Bax. And uh, this, this, sorry, one more question we have received, sir. Uh, yeah. This question. Uh, Sir, people are saying that slow scan and fast scan. We have a yes. confusion which one is the good one uh, to get the good uh, XRD pattern. Yeah, this is a practical question. Uh, generally, even we, generally, if you take four degrees per minute scan rate, you get good intensity XRD diffraction. Sometimes, so technician, I don't blame technician, maybe due to that pressure or too many samples, instead of 4 degrees per minute, sometimes they do 6 degrees per minute or 10 degrees per minute. The problem here, if the sample quantity is not more, if the sample is not highly crystalline, if you do 6 degree per minute scan rate or 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees per minute scan rate, you may not get good density diffraction pattern you will get fluorescence and you will if seeing that x-ray diffraction pattern you will conclude that it is amorphous no it becomes of the fast scan so low scan is always advisable you get very fine x-ray diffraction and you don't require maybe one degree per minute unless you wanted to do any any specific 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 information you want to get you go for low scan rate otherwise normal scan rate 2 degrees per minute or 4 degrees per minute your normal crystalline material will do 10 degrees per minute is a fast scan fast scan rate scan the x-ray diffractions are discouraged you will lose the information sometimes you may not get the diffraction peak because if it may be the sample may be very less quantity or even high quantity if the sample is not highly crystalline you will not get any peak generally recommended is a low scan rate. Very low scan rate, if you want to do retwill refinement, you go for very low scan rate, 0 0.01 degree per cell. There we will talk about step size. So, optimized scan rate or low scan rate is preferred. Definitely fast scan rate is not preferred. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, Thanks this, a lot for this, your excellent This low scan rate and fast scan rate will, will lead to the duration of your X-ray diffraction experiment or running time. Low scan rate will take longer time. Okay, so fast scan rate will take very short time. So if if the technician has several samples to do in a day, sometimes he will do at six degrees per minute, ten degrees per minute, and give you that X-ray diffraction. You may not get the peak, or the peak may be very 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 hard peak you will get. Yes. Thanks a lot for your excellent talk, sir, and uh, answering for all the questions. Our uh, Dean School of Physical Chemical Sciences, Professor S. Kutirani, madam, and our head of the department, Chemistry, Dr. T. Sir, mm -hmm. Professor, are you sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, okay. Very good. Very informative and elaborative lecture, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And you have shown the model also. It was attracted by our students. Thank you. Okay, sir. We will continue our Thank you very much, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I hope uh, it was useful to the students. Thank, so, you. thank you for accepting our invitation, sir. And thank you for your informative uh, talk on XRD. And uh, my special thanks uh, for you to uh, highlight the questions for a GATE and CSIR examination also, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank very you. Much, very much. Thank you. I said that. So then I would like to thank uh, my friend Dr. Vasmali for uh, yeah, so suggesting me as one of the resource person and Dean and for inviting me. Thank you, Vanata. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Nivetita.
conclude the session. Nivedita. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thanks a lot, Professor, for your kind acceptance and deliver the outstanding talk. Thank you, sir. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much. Nivedita, you can. Okay, sir. I thank Dr. Professor Eru Malai for accepting our letter and delivered such a wonderful presentation. On behalf of the management of B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology, Dr. S. Kutirani, Dean of Physical and Chemical Sciences, Dr. D. Ishwara Murthy, Head of the Department of Chemistry, and Dr. N. Vasi Malai, Assistant Professor and Coordinator. And I, I thank all the participants for participating. Thank you all so much. Feedback link is posted in your charting box. So it will be active for 30 minutes. Please fill it. Meanwhile, don't leave from the online meeting. Thank you, Vasi Malai. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, you are in the right place. Sir, I'm not running. You are going in. Pata, bro. Sir, time ka aram chilla na. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Continue. We will come. Okay. And now okay, you are in the right place. Am I correct? Right? Okay. Yes, sir. So, in my right place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. It's much difficult. Thanks a lot, Dean, you. madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for arranging this wonderful lecture. Thank you. It's my pleasure, madam. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you, Vasi Malai. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Okay. Every day you start the program. Okay. No need to wait for us. You start it. We will come. Come. Okay. Some okay, other meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Thank yes. You. Dear participants, uh, some information I want to give you. Am I audible? Students? Am I audible? Sir, audible. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Okay. So, more than 100 questions we have received. Uh, having interest to ask the question. So, in that attitude is a good one. So, because of that attitude, I congratulate all the people, those who are asked the question. And also, meanwhile, you have to think admit side. So, 100 questions within 15 minutes or 20 minutes, not able to ask all the questions. So from the 100 questions, I have chosen some best questions. So if I'm not asked, chatting box link, so we will send to the uh, uh, resource persons. If some technical question is there, definitely they will ask. But many of the questions are fundamental questions, like uh, uh, what is wavelength? Uh, they are asking about advantages of XID. These things, you can get it from internet. We don't need to get it from our resource persons. Some technical questions, some novel questions, that is okay, we can forward to them, we can get it back, their answer. But the fundamental questions means, it, please uh, go through the textbook, as well as you can type in a Google. So I don't... Ask. The meanwhile, I encourage you and sentence making other things. Many people ask a simple, simple question, but I made that question as a sentence. So it's a little modification I done. So all the rights I have it. So thanks a lot for giving me that uh, chance to me to ask that question. So I just modified and explained in a very good manner to the research person, then they answer. So this type of things will be continued for upcoming events too. And already I posted several things like our uh, uh, Google Sheet, in that Google Sheet, I ask you to write all things, but many people, they even they did not know uh, or didn't aware about the Google Sheet. So because of that purpose, many people, they have...
so then we lost many data after that i have decided to put the google form the google form we shared uh, 400 people they just given the responses so others also please give the responses there you can give your standard operating procedure we will share you by tomorrow morning there are some students still have a confusions about this program and the uh, the mark split up other things for example the mark split up i can tell you so initially we will monitor your attendance so 75 percentage of attendance is must to get the uh, certificate so we are not keeping 100 percentage 75 percentage it's okay so initially i told you two quiz we will be conducting but now i reduce because i want to give more Uh, mark for the mini project so only one quiz we will be conducting 20 questions will be there that is 20 mark quiz then assignment if not seminar if you are submitting assignment you can get 20 mark if you are giving seminar you can get the 20 marks for totally 40 marks the remaining 60 marks we just given for your mini project home mini project so the more weightage is there for mini project Professor Yel Malay has delivered. Even myself also learned several things from his talk. It is very cost and love and affection with us. He came over and delivered a talk through online. So upcoming events also will. And this hundred marks, I mean, quiz twenty marks, seminar or assignment twenty marks. home mini project system marks so totally 100 marks in this 100 mark you have to get 50 percentage 50 marks those who are getting 50 marks the more than 50 marks they are all eligible to get this certificate so this is a small criteria if we don't have any rules and regulations we cannot be able to conduct any programs so that is why we stick on this one definitely if you are submitting you can get the full mark but do it in then those who are interested give us seminar get ready and tomorrow we have a slot in that slot uh, deliver your talk so the through 500 participants they are also will be uh, then assignment first prize second prize third prize seminar first prize second prize third prize and as well as home mini project first prize second prize third prize are there so overall those who got the more prize in this three cases they are also giving outstanding performance prize okay the certificate we will be issued so therefore so we are also encouraging by giving the certificate meritorious certificates so make use of it and uh, Uh, try to get the certificate because it is also very important equal to the participant certificate so the standard operating procedure we will send you these three formulas only is there quiz assignment or seminar and home mini project home mini project it is mandatory for all the people so you have to do it in a almost 1 hour 5 minutes or 20 minutes i given the talk so that talk please go through it don't be lazy so whatever the question you want to ask me answer is there inside in that talk so please go through it so uh, any clarification any suggestions you want from my side so feel free to text a mail or you just feel free to chat me definitely our team and myself will help you so we, i want to talk to you one by one but uh, 1500 participants are there it is very hard to talk to you one to one that is why i just conducted two meetings in the two meetings 100 100 people i met them and they asked several questions so for upcoming days definitely i will meet you through google meet so 100 100 persons or i can find a suitable way to meet 200 or 250 people definitely if you for finish this even 
so i will give you a chance to talk to you one by one personally okay apart from that with our busy schedule we are sending frequently the answer for all of your chatting boxes message and other things and one important instruction i want to give you so encouragements so the people these days they are sending only the complaints or any clarification well you just drop one message sir i am uh, from uh, meghalaya uh, union christian college so today talk was uh, very nice so thanks a lot for your this type of appreciation message also you can send us or you can write one mail so we we will make it as a documents that is also good things okay so i uh, request you to give a 100 percentage support to conduct this program definitely this program will be very useful for you and also i am telling you you are all lucky still many people are forgot to join many people still waiting they are waiting understood but you are lucky you got the seat to utilize this opportunity and gain some knowledge from us and many people are leaving from our many people uh, less than percentage of people from our group all the communication or anything we will be communicating through whatsapp message if you are not in the whatsapp group please inform us as much as earlier so then we will include you otherwise you will not get any information from us so tomorrow thank you so much admin please uh, stop the live in youtube and also uh, close uh, zoom sir సార్ చాట్ బాక్స్ లో చాట్ బాక్స్ లో ఉంటాయి అబ్బా సార్ మినీ ప్రాజెక్ట్ పట్టి కొంచెం ఎక్స్ట్రా సొల్యూషన్ సో ఐ హోప్ దట్ మెనీ పీపుల్ డిడ్ నాట్ సీ దట్ వీడియోస్ ద వీడియో ఐ జస్ట్ సెండ్ టు యు ఆర్ so second time when i conduct the meeting with a participant from number 200 i recorded that entire uh, talk so all the answers are like nagas like chemical synthesis or something but the main things we have to look inside of our home and uh, the near to our home what are the facilities the facilities only we have to choose the number one check your kitchen so lot of wastes are there kitchen waste and the many but our mom so every day she is throwing the waste electricity from that uh, vegetable waste there are some youtube link is there youtube videos are there small small mini project ideas there in online just you can take that one and you are cooking can produce that gas so from there turbine commons uh, that one turbine if it is rotated because of the steam then at least 4 volt if it is coming then you can connect one small led bulb if the bulb is blinking that is enough that type of demonstration is enough that is one kind of project and otherwise you just convert the nano particles from the waste materials so that dry then fire it and take ash that has convert to the charcoal lot of techniques available that you can use for the purification of waste water you so i have to get the waste water you can prepared by yourself artificially sewage water uh, bathing waste and uh, uh, how to say washing waste and kitchen waste water you just collect mix all the things that is one water otherwise you can take uh, food dye little bit 
put inside and produce the artificial waste water. can you able to prepare the carbon quantum dots carbon material from your kitchen the details given in a uh, the videos so for example so waste dosa dawa you can take take a lemon extract 5 ml and mix with sugar that one you if take example 50 ml you have to heat it using gas burner at least a uh, few minutes after that the 50 ml should come equal to 7 ml or 5 ml then take it out and wash with water take out that is a fluorescent material that is carbon quantum cards so these are all already reported in a paper it is published one it is not new one so but you have to change the materials if they are using one thing for example if they are using uh, lemon why don't you use uh, orange if they use orange why don't you use orange peel extract then mango extract anything any any fruit materials you can use it the theory behind that nano particles you have to go that is called as a uh, bottom up approach there are many approach bottom up approach it is molecule is 10 power minus 10 meter then you have to convert to the 10 power minus 9 meter so that things you can learn it from videos or by textbook or things you can prepare that is fluorescent material carbon material you can since you can apply for sensor Particles or any other materials. Then another one you can do with uh, uh, near to your home. So you have to already tell you. I have to. I ask you to take a. and by this syringe you know well injection syringe so that syringe 5 ml 3 ml 10 ml is available nearly it so don't think that all the facility you must have it whichever the availability is there with you you start your project that is enough and another guys you can prepare the organic farm i mean a uh, uh, bio fertilizer from waste why not you can prepare bio fertilizer you can convert the energy you can prepare the nano particles from waste then another guy you can do the corrosion inhibition studies how to do it sir so already told you then you just watch that video Uh, you have to take a one uh, five rupees coin. You have to take a weight. You don't have a weighing machines. You know, well, there are some app. So if you upload that app, you can use your mobile phone as a weighing machine. The details I given there, and also the pocket weighing machine you can buy from Amazon Flipkart. then it will come to your home after that you can take a weight you just take a use and throw uh, the transparent plastic cup then that cup you just buy the measuring jar i mean shop but you have to be very careful you have to throw it the needle in a correct place that is very sharp i am not the responsible person for that mistake you have to throw it in a correct place that is a needle so if we uh, very careful so project is important but life is more than important than project you have to be keep in your mind then you can take a coca cola 50 ml or 20 ml then drinking water in one uh, bottle uh, one cup ml then another one lemon extract you can take for the that Uh, run. 
so then uh, you just all the then one kind empty weight you can take it before you put inside you have to clean well and then cloth then the weight you have to take it put inside for all the things so one kind you have to put for the water one kind you have to put for the coca cola one kind you have to put for the lemon extract one kind you have to put for the milk one kind you have to put for the salt water one kind you have to put for the uh, turmeric water like this limit for one day next day 24 hours you can take out you can use your hand with you but in your ஜஸ்டிஃபை த மெக்கானிசம் after that you have to add the inhibitors for example all uh, solution you if you take a 50 ml now you have to take a 25 ml remaining what is inhibitors so you can take the neem leaves and put inside of mixer grinder take a extract that is neem leaves also inhibitors it is called green inhibitors or you can take a curry leaves or any herbal medicines whichever it is available near by your house again polish well and clean the coin with the soap water take a empty vial put inside now 25 ml whichever you taken that material is the 25 ml green inhibitor is the put inside after that two hours later you can take it then the weight you have to compare with the previous weight previous without inhibitor plus plus definitely with inhibitor you should be reduce the weight it means that it inhibit the corrosion that type of mechanism you can take that is also kind of project so video also i already posted in that talk so please kindly have a look of that video i cannot explain one and a half hours there but in that video i explain in well met and also drug delivery i want to do drug delivery how we have to do at home can't do it can we do another way it just refer paracetamol uh, this days uh, out and take a ph of all, already i mentioned water coca cola uh, sodium chloride and another one like that you can take 20 different solutions ph and put one 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 pellet inside and check the solubility we just take a spoon and stir well and check the solubility take a photograph where it is soluble more at what it is it soluble okay that is also one kind of project the solubility of paracetamol in different solution understood so this type of project you can do and food packaging application bioplastic preparation can take a corn flour wheat flour from there you can prepare lot of videos lot of articles is available in online use that articles and you can prepare and food packaging application how to do sir yes you can able to do you can take the shellfish you know well there is one fish you can take any fish that fish uh, shells you have to remove it so before we cook we used to remove it that shell contains some biopolymer you just make it dry then uh, that one then you powder you can eat it that powder you just mix with oil like our uh, coconut oil or uh, other oils so take a mango then apply in the top of the layers other uh, then check there uh the fungal formation and other things 
one day two day one week you can check it the color changes mango uh, color but uh, without uh, it become a bluish so this type of things you can use this one is called food packaging applique food packaging materials from waste uh, fish materials how to prepare lot of articles is available lot of just go whatever industry acid is the home kill we are not using it we have to be you can convert the pH acidic pH that is enough nothing is wrong then that video copper tablet is there okay so if we check inside copper sulfate is there copper the zinc zinc sulfate is there and also there is a ointment for wound burning that is called silver x that is nothing but silver sal so you can buy it so you can prepare some nano particles from that one so how to do it by grinding method that video on that video i explain all the things how to do the grinding method preparation and also you can use microwave oven and also the heating method also you can prepare the Uh, bio fertilizer okay bio pesticides and also sanitizer bio herbal sanitizer these are all things one kind of small project only if already there what i have to do sir so sanitizer lot of sanitizer from others closely look inside what are the things they have taken so they just take the uh, aloe vera then neem then to see these things they have taken this time you can not you just take neem fruits understand and you just take other ingredients like some herbal medicine you just prepare report until get the all the apparatus all the instruments all the facilities whichever the facilities you sit and prepare the new projects understood so that type of things the small study and other things we do okay i hope that it will be very useful for you and all of you i request you go through that video there i well clearly explain all the things what are the possible just shown some materials how to get the materials from amazon how to get the this from at your home your mother or your sister they have it the mortar pestle very small one it is 100 rupees one stone or uh, um, melamine melamine uh, mortar pestles that is enough for the grinding method you just go and buy with 100 rupees so then you can do all the things in that mortar and pestle all our food materials our uh, uh, for example our iron iron tablets or grandma or people are taking it is also medicines so put inside and use well uh, you just prepare Uh, nice iron oxide nano particles and other things the details are given in that video so please kindly go through the video also that type of spraying things are in 
for online shopping okay you just go through on that directions also sir i need a beaker don't need to buy a beaker you can use the used uh, i mean uh, the plastic cup for a transparent cup you know well the coke and other things people are drinking with that use and throw cup transparent cup. that is enough cola acidic ph only so if you put inside it's not dissolving so you can use it that way so obviously what is going inside waste to you have okay mother pandi any questions uh so few tip sir project on the video form or on the thesis form kekranga so sir voice sir voice break out okay if you give the photographs and when you writing the photographs is needed any other question sir voice break aitchu sir ninga enna sonninga therla sir now clear ipo kekda yes sir yes sir clear so video is mandatory so you have to take a video for the entire project and give your explanation by oral uh, so see now i am going to take a water i just taken a wait coca cola i just part for demonstration this type of video is needed uh, sir how to match that video and other things you can send me the two videos or three videos that is a big job because after to, uh, after putting inside you have to wait for 24 hours you cannot able to run the video for 24 hours so after put inside you just close the video you can send it no issue okay i am not for all of you have mobile phone you can do that one and second one take a photographs of each materials before put after put before take weight after take weight and the observation other things that will be very important when you are writing the report during your report writing you have to paste in your place so only soft copy we are asking okay any other doubt no sir okay students if no questions uh, see you by tomorrow thanks a lot be in touch with us feel free to chat to us and uh, closely watch our thing box of each groups thank you so much session close panir